Hey art friends, this video is a collection of our top 10 how to draw lessons from 2022. Yeah, these are our most watched videos from last year. It starts with number 10 and then ends with our number one video that we posted last year. We hope you have your art supplies and are ready to draw. Also want to remind you to have fun and practice. Those are the two most important things. And here's number 10 of our most watched videos from last year. Hey, our friends, they're gonna draw a burger monster. Yeah, when it's folded up, it'll just look like a cute burger, and then when you open it, it'll be a scary burger mm -hmm. with melty cheese. We hope you're gonna follow along. You need your drawing supplies. We're gonna use a marker. You also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yeah, you ready to start? Yes. Let's put our markers off to the side and fold our paper. We're gonna take the top edge, line it up with the bottom edge, and when you get it lined up, press down and crease it in the middle and then out to the corners. Then we'll take this top flap and we're gonna line it up with the top edge. We can line it up and then crease it down. Then let's flip over our paper and repeat the same step. We're gonna take that top flap, line it up and crease it down the middle. Now this is just a guide fold, so we're gonna unfold that, flatten it out, and then flip it back over. And so when you're all finished, your paper should open up like this. Next, we'll put under our drawing paper some scratch paper just to protect our table. It doesn't have to be red. I just like red because it matches our table. Next, we're ready to draw. We have our markers and we're gonna try to draw this line on top of the fold without drawing it down here. It might be a little tricky, but I'm gonna, we're gonna try to just do it right above right above the fold, and that's okay if you get a little bit underneath. I'm gonna turn it this way so I can draw that line a little straighter. So tricky trying to draw that without drawing over the fold. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our tomato level, and you could add also different ingredients to your burger if you wanted to. We're gonna draw the tomato slice coming up on each side. And then let's draw the lettuce level. We're gonna layer, we're gonna draw a wiggly, wobbly, wavy line that comes across to the other side. And look at the end, I kind of curl it back in. Yeah, now let's draw the top bun. We're gonna draw a line that connects the two sides of the lettuce together. And then we're gonna draw a big upside down U shape or rainbow line for the very top of the bun. So we're gonna come up like this and then back down and connect. Nice, I like it. <laughs> now let's also draw the layers below the fold and we're gonna draw our cheese level first. So I'm gonna draw a diagonal line that comes out on each side. And then let's draw a line that comes up like this and then I'm going to come back down so we're going to have another little corner in here and then back up so there's our melty cheese it's kind of folding down and then what's the next level we need the patty yes let's draw a curve right here underneath the cheese on both sides and then let's connect the bottom of those two lines together with some thick meat <laughs> oh yes <laughs> And then we're gonna draw, oh, keep going. Okay. <laughs> now we're gonna draw the bottom bun. We're gonna draw that same, kind of looks like the meat patty layer. We're gonna draw two curves coming down. And you could even add more layers if you wanted to. This could be a second patty. We're gonna connect these two lines for the bottom bun. We did it. Now let's add a funny face or funny eyes to our hamburger. We're gonna draw a Circle over here on the left, and you could change these eyes. So you don't have to draw them exactly the same as me. You could also make your eyes angry if you if you wanted to make your burger a little scarier. I'm gonna draw smaller circles inside for the highlight, and then color in the big circle, but leave that little circle white. We did it, Hadley. Now we're ready to open up our paper and then flatten out the folds so that it's easier to draw on. 
This next part, you can change as much as you want. You can add as many details and as many fun surprises inside of this folding area. You just wanna make sure that you draw it below the top fold and above the bottom fold, so that when it's folded up like this, it's all hidden. Let's first draw melty cheese mm -hmm. on the top of our hamburger. So we'll start here and let's draw little drips. I'm gonna draw, they kinda of look like raindrops but I'm gonna draw some of them really long and some shorter. And some of them can be small and some big. We're gonna go all the way across and we're not connecting on the sides over here. Yeah, leave a little space. And then we can draw the teeth. Let's start here. I'm gonna draw a sharp tooth that comes out and we're gonna do a lot of overlapping with the cheese. And then I'm gonna draw another sharp tooth behind the cheese. Oh, let's draw more, lots of zigzags that come over. The sharper you make these teeth, the scarier your burger's gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love yours. Okay, now let's draw the melty cheese down here. And this time, because this is dripping down and this at the bottom isn't dripping, it's just kind of down here. So we're just going to draw small waves across to the side. Then let's draw the sharp teeth here. We can draw, first let's draw a letter M right in the middle. And the outside edges are curved. Then we can draw more curved teeth on the side, left side. And I'm going to connect into the melty cheese right here. And then I'll draw curved teeth going the other direction, and then connect in to the melted cheese. Yes! All right, now let's draw a really scary tongue. We'll start here, and let's draw a curve that comes out, around, and then we can even curl around. Then let's start at the end of the tongue and draw a point, and then as we come this way, look how it's getting thicker and thicker until we come all the way over to the other side of the mouth. Oh, that looks really, really cool. Okay, now I'm getting scared, even though I'm hungry. Okay, let's keep, <laughs> let's draw the side of the mouth connecting. So I'm gonna draw a curvy, wavy line that connects to the tongue. We're gonna imagine it going behind the tongue and connecting down to the teeth. And let's do the same thing on this side. Draw it wavy and curve into the bottom teeth. Now let's draw the melty cheese on the very outside of the mouth. We'll start up here on the tomato slice and we're gonna draw a, looks like a raindrop that comes out and then back in. And then we're gonna draw it behind the tongue and come back in. And then we're gonna draw it coming all the way down here. Oh, maybe one more drip. And then we're gonna connect into the cheese at the very bottom. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna add lots of little drips. And I'm gonna connect in there and then come down further. Or oh, one more big drip. And then connect to the cheese down at the bottom. I love how our burger mouth looks like it's made out of melted cheese. It looks really scary, except we're not completely done. We still need to color it. Yes, it's gonna look so much better colored in. This part will fast forward, so remember to pause the video and take time to color your drawings. You could also add extra details inside, like maybe french fries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you ready to fast forward? Yes. We did it, we finished drawing and coloring our burger monster. It looks super cool, all folded up. But let's show our friends the inside. On the count of three. Ready? One, One two, two, three. three. <laughs> <laughs> I love all of the french fries you added to the inside, especially the ketchup. It looks really spooky. I like your french fries too, but you could add whatever you want. Yeah, you could change your drawings. You could add onion rings or maybe even ice cream. Maybe your burger monster is eating a big sundae. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your burger monster. We do, and we hope you take extra time to color and add things to the inside. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye! Bye. Oh, oh you're... <laughs> my burger's gonna eat your burger. Arr. 
Hey art friends, we're super excited to draw with you today. We hope you have your art supplies all ready. You need something to draw with. We're gonna use markers. You also need some paper and something to color with. Yeah, and what are we drawing in today's video? A sloth. A really cute sloth. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You ready to start? Yeah. Let's first start by drawing our sloth's face over here on the right side of our paper. And I'm gonna draw the nose first. We'll draw a little U shape. Kind of over on the right, yeah. And then let's draw the top of the nose. We can connect the top. And let's color that shape in. Kind of looks like an upside down gumdrop. <laughs> now let's draw the mouth right underneath. We can draw a little curve. It's a happy sloth. Mm -hmm. And then let's draw the eyes. I'm gonna draw a circle over here on the left side of the nose and a circle over here on the right side of the nose. And then let's draw a small circle in the top left of each eye to make the eyes look shiny. This is the highlight. We're gonna leave that part white, but color in the big circle. Now let's draw the shape of the face. We're gonna start right here and draw a U shape that comes underneath and back up over here next to the other eye. Then let's draw the top of the face. We're gonna draw a curve that goes over and then we'll stop. We'll come back down towards the nose in the middle and then we could draw, let's draw a little zigzag line like this. Maybe it looks like a letter M. Yeah, and then we can draw a curve going over the other eye and connecting to the other side. Cute. Now this is the face. Let's draw the head next. I'm going to draw the same curve that comes underneath for the chin and then back up. And I'm drawing it really close to the face shape. <laughs> That's cute. And then let's draw the top of the head. We're going to come up and over and then stop right in the middle, kind of like what we did for the face. And then let's draw another letter M for a little fur on top of the head. And then let's connect down to the other side to finish. Nice. Now we're ready to draw the body. Let's draw the belly first. We're going to start here and just draw a little line, horizontal line that comes over to the left. And then let's curve up. And we'll stop. We're going to draw above the head because we're going to draw our sloth hanging from a branch. Then let's leave a little space and we're going to come down like this for the rest of the leg. And then we're going to start curving under and we're going to stop right about there. <laughs> now let's draw this arm coming down. We're going to draw it coming down like this. And then we're going to draw a little curve coming up and then connect to the back. And then right here at the end, let's draw another curve inside. And then two little lines for the claws. Now let's draw the top of the leg or the foot that's hanging onto the branch. And let's draw the branch coming out from that leg going across to the side of the paper. And then let's imagine that going underneath the leg or the foot and coming out and going to the left. Let's make this branch thicker. Let's draw another line just below this one. And then let's imagine it going behind the leg and coming out to the right side. And if Yours is, yours is a lot different. Your head is higher. You could draw it and connect to the head and then come over here and finish the branch. That looks even cuter. The next time I draw a sloth, I'm gonna draw the head bigger like yours. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make this leg right here. Let's draw it extending down a little further. And then let's draw the other leg behind this one. So we're gonna draw another line that comes up and then let's draw 
a line right next to it that matches the same width here. So I'm going to use my eyes to measure and then draw the other side of the leg coming down like that. And then up here at the top, let's draw letter U. This is for the claws that are wrapping around the branch. The same thing we did down here, let's add two lines for the claws. Let's draw the other arm coming up. I'm gonna draw another line right here. Yours is overlapping, so you could leave it off, but then I'm gonna draw another line for the other side. Yeah, and then let's draw another letter U right here for the claws for his hand, or her hand. And then we could draw two lines for the claws. Taryn, we did it. We finished drawing our cute little sloth, but we're not completely done. We need to color it. Yeah, this part will fast forward, but at the end you could pause the video to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yes. almost done coloring now we use our biannual markers to color with and the colors that we use if you have the same set we use Y423 for the body of our sloth and then Y611 for the face Y648 is the dark brown for the branch and I added leaves but you can leave the leaves off and G515 is the green I used for that it doesn't quite look like a sloth yet because we're missing something important yeah patches around the eyes. Yeah, that's what it's missing. And we're going to use WG03. This is a gray, a warm gray. And we're going to start here on the outside of the face and we're going to draw a curve that goes around the eye and then connects back to the outside of the face. Looks like a sideways letter U. And then let's color in that shape. So it's dark all the way around the eye and out to the cheek. You can also let this dry, this marker layer dry. And we'll come back and maybe add one more layer on top. But we can also repeat that shape going around the other eye and out to the cheek. And then color that shape in also. Now it looks more like a sloth, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm gonna go back over this side and because it's dried, it's gonna be a little darker and show up more. There we go. And then I'll come back and do the same thing over this eye. Make it a little darker by adding another layer. We finished coloring and drawing our cute sloths. Yours is my favorite. Oh, thank you. You guys can pause the video and take time to color your drawings and even add more things. Maybe there's a whole jungle in the background. Or maybe even another sloth. We hope you had fun drawing your sloth with us. I'm sure your drawings turned out really cute. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, our friends, we're going to draw a cat inside of a watermelon. Yeah, when it's folded up, it'll just look like a watermelon. And then when you open it, the cat will be inside. We hope you're going to follow along. It's going to be a lot of fun. You need your drawing supplies. We're going to use a marker. You also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yeah, you ready to start? Yes. Let's first take the top edge of our paper, line it up with the bottom, and crease it down the middle and out to the corners. And if you've already done one of our folding surprise lessons, we're just repeating the same steps. So you can even skip forward if you can do this part faster. All right, now let's take that top flap and line it up with the top edge and crease that one down also. Next, let's flip our paper over and repeat that same step. We'll take the top flap, line it up with the top edge, and crease it down. This is just a guide fold, so we can unfold that last one and flatten it out, then flip our paper back over so it opens like this when we're all done. And we have some scratch paper we'll put underneath our drawing paper just to protect our table. Now we're ready to use our markers, and we're first gonna draw the shape of our watermelon. We'll draw the top of our watermelon above the fold. I'm gonna start here. We're gonna draw a big upside down U. I'm gonna start here. We'll curve up, over, and down. Nice. 
Then let's draw the bottom of our watermelon going below the fold, curving around and back up to connect on the other side. That's it. We did it. We drew our watermelon. It's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're going to open up our paper and flatten out the fold so it's easier to draw on. Once we color this shape, it'll look more like a watermelon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let's draw the top of our watermelon. We're going to extend it down just past the fold on each side. I'm going to extend it a little further on each side. And we're going to make this look more 3D by adding an oval shape. And we want to make sure that this oval shape stays below the fold, the top fold. And then I'm going to curve around like this and then connect back. So we got this squished circle. We want to make sure that we're drawing below the fold so that when we fold it back up, it's hidden. Nice. Now let's repeat that same shape inside so that we can draw the center of our watermelon, the red part. Curve around and then connect where we started. There. I love it. Now let's extend the bottom of our watermelon up a little higher also. And let's add the little kitten paws coming over the edge of the watermelon. We're going to draw the letter U right here. And we want to make sure that we're drawing above this bottom fold. We're going to draw another little U shape right next to it for the other paw. And then let's connect the top of each U. And we can also draw the little paw lines down at the bottom, two little curves. And if we go too fast, what can our art friends do? Pause the video. Yeah, if you need extra time. Now we're going to draw the rest of the watermelon. I want to start lower than the outside edge. This is so we can make this look 3D too. So we're going to start by drawing a straight line in between the paws. And then we're going to curve up to the edge, kind of like we're matching up here. And then the same thing on the side, curve up to match or connect to the corner. Okay, now we're going to draw the little edge on the watermelon. We're going to add another line right here in between. And right here on the left side, watch this, I'm not going to draw all the way to the edge. We're going to leave a little space on each side and do the same thing over here. Nice. Now we're ready to draw our little cat. We're going to draw the head right here in the middle. Let's first draw the nose. I'm going to draw a little letter V right here below the fold. And then let's draw the top of the nose. And let's draw the mouth. We're going to draw a letter W, a curved letter W for the top of the mouth. <laughs> and then we can draw the mouth open so it's even cuter. We're going to draw a little big letter U underneath. Oh, we could also draw a little tongue inside. Now let's draw the sunglasses for our little kitten. Let's draw another letter U over here on the left for the lens on the left side and another letter U for the lens on the right side that matches. It looks like it's sleeping. It does, yeah. <laughs> let's draw the top of the lens on each side. And let's draw the frame that goes around the sunglasses. I'm going to start up on the top. We'll draw a curve that matches the lens, come down in between, and then back up over the other side. <laughs> it's looking really cute. Then we can draw a little letter C on the left side and a backwards letter C on the right side. And then we're going to trace around the bottom of the sunglasses for the rest of the frame. So we'll start here, trace around, and then in between the lenses where the nose goes, we're going to go up and back down. Now let's draw the shape of the head. We're going to start next to the glasses, or right on the glasses, and we're going to draw a big letter U that comes underneath the mouth and connect over on the right side. And we can draw the top of the head. We're going to leave a little space on each side for the ear. So I'm going to draw the top of the head right here, just a little curve in between the two eyes. <laughs> then we're going to draw an ear. We're going to come up, curve up, and then a corner up at the top, and then back down. 
And then let's do that same ear shape on the right side, little corner up at the top and back down. Mine looks like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks like a cat. Oh, we should add whiskers. Oh, yeah. That'll make it look more like a cat. We got three whiskers on each cheek. You could add more if you want. <laughs> Let's draw the inside of the ears also. I'm going to draw another upside down V shape inside. And then in between, let's draw a little zigzag line. And we can do the same thing on the right side. Now let's draw the body. We're going to draw a line that connects from the chin down to the paw. We could also add a little extra line for the belly. And what's our cat missing? A tail. A tail. Let's draw a little curve, S curve, that comes out and up. My marker's squeaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that usually means it's drying out a little bit. Maybe I need to change it for a new one. Yeah. We're going to draw another S curve right next to it. And then connect them together at the top. And then let's complete the watermelon. We're going to draw a little curve right here that connects in. We'll do that same curve on the other side for the inside of the watermelon. And then we'll draw another curve going around that's higher and also over here on the right side. Hadley, we did it. We finished drawing our cute summer kittens, except we're not completely done. We still need to color them. Yes, my favorite part. We're gonna fast forward, so remember to pause the video and take time to color your drawings. You ready to fast forward? Yes. We did it! We finished drawing and coloring our cute watermelons, except we need to show our art friends the inside. Yes. You ready? On the count of three. One, One two, two, three. Happy, Happy summer! summer. <laughs> <laughs> I love your little kitten. It looks super cute, especially the sunglasses. I love the little reflection. It looks like the ocean. I also like the seeds and the extra watermelon exploding. Yeah, me too. You can also add whatever you want to the inside of your folding surprise. You could also color it any way you want. We hope you had fun drawing a summer kitten. We do. We hope you had a lot of fun and we hope you take extra time to change your drawings. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey Art Friends, today we are going to draw a Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah, we hope you're going to follow along and need your drawing supplies. We're going to use markers, but you can use a pencil. You also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yep. You ready to start? Yes. We've drawn a lot of puppies and dogs before, but we've never drawn their heads sideways or kind of like they're looking at you with a question. <laughs> so let's do that with this one. Let's turn our paper a little diagonal like this, and we're going to draw the head that turned this way. And we're going to draw the nose first. So this is going to feel really weird because it's diagonal. But we're going to <laughs> we're going to try. We're going to draw a U shape for the nose. And Jack Russell Terriers kind of have a bigger nose. And then we're going to draw the top of the nose. Let's color that shape in. Then we're going to draw the eyes. We're going to draw a circle right here, and we're going to draw the same circle, size circle, over here on the right. Then we're going to draw a little circle on the top left of each eye, and then let's color in the big circle but leave the little circle white. That part we sped up, so remember to pause the video if you need extra time. Okay, now let's draw the shape of the head. We're going to start here next to the eye, and we're going to draw a curve that comes down underneath the nose. We're going to come across like this, and then we're going to come back up next to the other eye. Yes! I love that our two drawings don't look exactly the same. They're both turning out awesome. And that's because the most important thing is to have fun and to practice. Yes, it's okay if your drawings look different than ours too. I'm sure they're turning out awesome. All right, let's keep going. I especially love that you have more space underneath the nose than I do. So on my, I'm going to draw a different mouth than you. So I'm going to draw a little curve this way and a little curve like this. So if our art friends have little space right here, they could do the similar mouth. On yours, you could draw a curve that comes out to the left, uh, almost like a U shape. Yes, and then that same curve going the other direction. 
right next to it, you could start in the same spot. So right here, come down and make the same curve, but going the other way. Yeah. And then you could even add a little tongue right here. So you could draw another U in between. Yes, that looks really cute. You could also even make the mouth a little open. You could add a little curve here and a little curve on this side and then color it in. Yes. And then one on the other side and then color those shapes in. Ah, oh, that looks really cute. Our friends can change their drawings too, just like this. You can add different details or add uh, eyelashes. You could also add, what else could they add? A tongue like this. You could also even change the eyes so maybe they're closed or even winking. On yours, you could also add a curve over the nose just to make it look like it has a snout, like your nose is pointed more straight at us and mine's pointed down. Yes, that's really cute. Okay, now let's draw the ears. We're gonna draw the ears kind of floppy, but they're also pointed. So I'm gonna draw the letter V, it's gonna come down like this, and then draw another side coming back up. Do you see the, there's a little letter V connected to the side of the head. And on this one, I'm gonna draw the letter V coming down a little further, because um, this one's hanging differently. <laughs> then I'm gonna draw the other side coming back up. Now let's draw the top of the head. We're gonna leave a little space in between the letter V. So I'm gonna draw a curve that comes like this over to the other side. Yeah, and then we're gonna draw the top of the ear. Right here on the outside, we're gonna curve, and then we're gonna to connect to, that, to the top of the head. Yes, and then let's do the same thing over here. We'll draw a curve in the corner, and then we'll connect into the head. We did it, we drew the head. And look, it's tipped to the side, almost like our puppy has a question. <laughs> <laughs> or looking at us funny. Okay, now let's draw the body. We're gonna draw a curve that comes down, like this on the left, and also coming down on the right. So two curves that match, and they come down to the same length. Yeah. Now let's draw the toes, or the feet. We're gonna draw a curve that comes around like this, and then we're gonna come up, but then we're gonna stop. We're not gonna go all the way to the head. And then let's draw that same size foot and leg on the other side. Then we can draw a little curve in between for the belly. And we can also draw two little toes on each foot. Now let's draw the back legs. I'm gonna draw a little curve that comes out on each side. And then we're gonna draw the little foot sticking out further like that on both sides. And then let's also add two little toe lines on each foot. Okay, now we need to add the tail. Let's draw a little curve coming out to the left. And we're gonna draw a little curve at the top, but then we're gonna get further away towards the bottom. Looks like a little hot dog. <laughs> we did it. Well, it just kind of looks like a puppy. We still need to color it, but let's also add a few extra things to our dog. We should get it dressed up for winter or fall because it's kind of cold outside. Yeah. Should we do that? Yes. Okay, let's first add a scarf. I'm gonna draw a little curve underneath the neck. And this could, you could add different things to your drawing. You could add a collar. You could even put your puppy in a full winter coat. <laughs> Let's just add the little scarf right here. Let's connect the right side up to the scarf. And we're gonna draw the end of the scarf coming down kind of in front of our puppy's belly. So I'm gonna draw the letter L coming down. And then we could also even add another side to that scarf like this. And then I'm gonna come back up. And we could also add little things at the bottom of our scarf. And we also need to give our little puppy a hat. It's gonna be cold outside, right? So we're gonna try, we're gonna draw a little upside down U shape for the hat. I think my puppy's wondering why it's dressed up for winter. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna add another curve at the bottom. And then let's give a little pom-pom to the top of our hat. I'm gonna draw a zigzag line 
that goes around and kind of makes a circle shape. We did it, we finished drawing our Jack Russell Terrier. Well, it doesn't quite look like Jack Russell Terrier. We still need to color it. Yeah, this part will fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Taryn, we did it. We finished drawing and coloring our cute little puppy. I especially love how it looks all colored in. Me too, and I also love the hat and the scarf. Yeah, you guys can pause the video right now to match your same coloring and also add even more things to your drawing. You could add a full background or even a little doggy bowl or maybe even a bone. We hope you had fun drawing your Jack Russell Terrier. We do, we hope you had a lot of fun and we'll see you later, art friends. Goodbye. Bye. Hey art friends, today we're drawing a character from Mario Odyssey. Who are we drawing? Cappy. Yeah, the hat. We hope you're gonna follow along, the hat that you throw. Yeah. <laughs> you need your markers or something to draw with, some paper and- Some colors. Yeah, you ready to start? Yes. Let's first draw the eyes and we're gonna draw them in the middle of our paper, but towards the left so that we have room for the hat on the right side. Let's first draw the pupil or, or the iris. This is the colored part that's around the pupil. So we're gonna draw an oval shape like this. Actually, this could be the pupil. No, we're gonna, and then we can draw it a little bit bigger. Yeah, and then the top, we're gonna draw a circle and then we'll color in the pupil. Then we're gonna draw the iris or the colored part that goes around the pupil. So we're gonna add another oval. Well, this might make it too big. That's okay, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> there you go, all the way around. Then we're gonna draw the white part for our eye. We're gonna start here. We're gonna draw another oval, but watch how big we're gonna make this. We're gonna come down really far. And then on the right side, we're gonna come up really close to what we've already drawn and then connect back where we started. Cabby's eyes are so big. Yeah, they're really big. And we're, we're making them huge, even bigger maybe than they are in the game. <laughs> That's okay, right? Because we're practicing. Oh, I like that yours kind of bumps out right here. You could also smooth that out. We're gonna add even another oval that goes around. So now let's start up here. We're gonna start a little further away, up at the top, but then on the side, we're gonna get a little closer. See how it's thinner on the side? And then we're gonna come down like this. We're gonna come around. And then up here at the top, we're gonna to connect. We're gonna come back up to the top where we started and connect in. And my lines are a little wobbly too. That's okay, right? Yeah. The most important thing is- To have fun. And to- Practice. Practice, yeah. And it's okay if your drawings look a little different than ours. Both of our drawings look a little different and they're both turning out awesome. I'm going back over it to smooth out some of those wobbles. And I love that you made that bigger circle come around and touch there. We're gonna color this border gray so you won't even see those extra lines. Now we're ready to draw the other eye right next to it. So this one first, we're gonna draw this oval, the inside oval. And we're gonna start, so we'll come over here and this is where we're gonna start the same height and we're gonna start here. We're gonna come down around like this and we're gonna come back up and we're gonna get really close to touching and then we'll connect in to where we started. I'm gonna go back over mine a little bit more to smooth it out. Sometimes turning your paper sideways helps. All right, now let's draw the outside circle. So we're gonna start up really high just like we did over here and then on the side, we're gonna get really close and you can get even closer on yours. Then we're gonna come down further and then when we connect, we'll connect into the other eye. We'll imagine it going through and coming out and connecting up at the top. Yeah. Now let's draw the inside part of the eye. So let's start with this one, the iris. We're gonna start at the same height and we're gonna come all the way around and this one could even touch the border or the outside of the eye. And then let's draw the pupil inside that's smaller. And we can also draw that little highlight at the top and color the pupil in, but leave that little highlight white. 
We drew the eyes, now we're ready to draw the hat. Let's start by drawing a line that connects the bottom of the eyes right here. Then we're gonna imagine that going through the eye, coming out the right side, and we're gonna curve down, and we'll stop maybe right about there. So yours could come down and maybe stop in here somewhere, like maybe there. And then right here on the left side, we're just gonna come out just a little ways. Really small. There you go. Then let's connect right here, this line up to the eye. We're gonna imagine that coming through and it's gonna come out right here at the top of the left eye. We're gonna come over the right eye and we're gonna come down like this. And then right at the end, we're gonna curve back into the line, this line right here that we drew. Nice. Now let's draw the bill or the visor that comes down. Yours, you could just come straight down and we're gonna curve it back into here. So I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna curve like this. You can watch me, we're gonna curve around. I'm gonna turn my paper sideways. We're gonna curve like this. And then right at the end, we're gonna curve into the hat. Yes, I love that yours is different. Awesome, you did it. Then we can add one more detail. We're gonna draw the same line just above it. We're gonna draw another line that matches, that's a little higher, and then we'll curve into the hat. We did it, we finished drawing Cappy. It looks really cool, except we still need to? Color it. Yeah, we, we color it red, it's gonna look more like Cappy. Yeah. <laughs> this part will fast forward, but at the end, you can pause the video to match our same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Awesome, give me five. We did it. We finished drawing and coloring Cappy. He looks so much better, all colored. Yeah, especially all red. Yeah, we, we used our biannual markers to color with. If you have the same set, we use this red, R317, that we used to color the whole thing. And then I used a darker red, R218, to add a few shadows behind the eyes. We also used a white color pencil to add the stitching. Yeah, just along the front. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing, Kathy. We do, we hope you had a lot of fun. And remember, it's okay if your drawings look different than ours. I'm sure they turned out awesome. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, art friends, today we're drawing a really cute dog. What are we drawing? A beagle. A beagle. Yeah, we hope you're gonna follow along. You need your drawing supplies, also some paper and... Something to color with. Yes. You ready to start? Yes. Let's first draw our beagle's nose. We're gonna draw the letter V in the middle of our paper, but kind of towards the top, or a little higher on our paper so that we have room for the body. And then let's draw the top of the nose. We'll draw a little curve to connect. And then we can also color in that shape. Then let's draw the mouth. We can draw a little U shape that comes out to the left and also the same U coming out to the right. And we can also draw the little tongue sticking out. I'm gonna draw a letter U connecting the first two U's together, yeah. Then we can also draw the eyes. Let's draw a circle on the left and then the same size circle over here on the right. Then we can draw smaller circles in the top left of each eye. This is the highlight or the light reflection to make the eyes look shiny. And we can also color in the big circle, but leave that little circle white. Anytime we fast forward the video, or if we go too fast, what can our friends do? Pause the video. Yeah, for extra time. Okay, now let's draw the shape of our beagle's head. We're gonna start here on the left next to the eye, and we're gonna draw a curve, or a big letter U, that comes under and back up next to the right side. Yeah. And then let's also draw this curve coming up higher Right above, we're gonna stop right above, kind of above the eye, above the left eye, and then we'll extend this side coming up higher too. 
<laughs> yes. And then we're going to also draw the top of our beagle's head, but we're going to leave a little space on both sides. So we're going to start here and it's almost like we're trying to complete the shape of our puppy's head, but with a little space, a little gap for the ears on each side. Then on each side, we're going to draw the bottom of our beagle's floppy ears. We're going to draw a little curve that comes out right here to the left, and then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. <laughs> it's looking so cute. Okay, and then let's start up here. We're going to draw the top of the ear. So we're going to draw a little line where, that comes out on each side. And then right here, we're going to draw a diagonal line that comes out to the side. and also the same thing over here. And it's kind of curved in the corner and then we come out like that. <laughs> then we're gonna draw this connecting down to the bottom, but watch, we're gonna draw a curve like this and it's gonna S curve. Right at the end, we're gonna draw a little corner on the ear. Yeah, and then we'll do the same thing on the right side. We'll draw an S-curve going the other direction, and then right at the end, draw a little corner at the bottom. Those are our floppy beagle ears. Then right here, up at the top, we're going to draw a little upside-down raindrop shape right in the corner. And we can do that same thing over here on the side, a little raindrop shape. And this makes the ears look like they're folded over. Awesome! And then we can also color in those shapes. We finished drawing the head, now we can draw the body. Let's draw the collar first. We're going to draw a little curve underneath the chin. And then we can draw the little dog tag, circle at the end. You could also change the shape if you want. Then let's draw the body. We're going to draw two lines coming down from each side of the collar. And then let's draw the inside of our puppy's legs. We can draw shorter lines right here. And then we're going to draw the paws. We're going to draw upside down U shapes that connect both of the leg lines together. And I love beagle paws. They're really big <laughs> for, especially when they're puppies. We're going to draw the bottom of the paws connected on each side. And then we can draw the toes. I'm going to draw two curves on each foot. Then we can also draw a little line right here for the belly of our puppy. Now let's draw the back paws. We're going to draw a curve coming out to the side. And we can match that same curve on the other side. And I'm stopping a little higher than the front paws. And then we're going to draw the bottom connecting back in. And then let's add one little toe line because these feet are turned a little more out. Oh, let's also draw the back legs sticking out to the side because our puppy is sitting down. What's our beagle missing? A tail. Yeah, let's draw it sticking out to the side and up because our puppy is happy. <laughs> and then we're gonna draw it starting up at the top and then when we come back down, we'll get a little thicker towards the bottom. We did it, we finished drawing our beagle. Whoa, it doesn't really look like a beagle yet. It just looks like a puppy. What are we missing? The color. Yeah, this part will fast forward, but at the end, you can pause the video to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Taryn, we did it. We finished drawing and coloring our cute beagles. Yours is my favorite. I love the little eyelashes. You. you can pause the video right now to match our same coloring. We used our markers to color with. But you can use whatever you have at home. Yeah, like colored pencils or even crayons. If you have the same biannual marker set, the main brown that we use is Y416. We use that for the head. And then also be sure to leave that white patch down the nose. The black color or the dark brown color that we used was? Y976. Yeah. We also use blue and pink for the collar. Oh, and also it kind of a medium brown for the ears. And that color is Y529. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing a beagle. Yes, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. And remember, you can change your drawings any way you want. You could also even add a background to finish your drawing. We'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Bye.
Hey, our friends, today we're gonna draw a panda. Yeah, except with a unicorn horn, mm -hmm. a panda corn. We hope you're gonna follow along. You need your drawing supplies. Do you have your marker? Yes. And you also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yeah, you ready to start? Yes. Let's first draw our panda's nose. I'm gonna draw the letter V right in the middle of our paper. Then we could draw the top of our panda's nose. Looks like an upside down triangle. And we could also color in that shape. And then let's also draw the mouth. I'm gonna draw a curve that comes out of the bottom of the nose and curls to the left, and also a U shape that curls to the right. Okay, now let's draw the eyes. And we're gonna draw them kind of far away from the nose so that we have room for the spot. So let's first draw a circle about this big and another circle on the other side, the same size. Yeah. There you go. And let's draw a smaller circle in the top left of each eye for the highlight to make the eyes look shiny. And cute. Yes. Okay, now let's color in that big circle but leave the little circle white. You're adding eyelashes too. I <laughs> love it. It looks really cute. Although when we add the spot, maybe those will disappear. Oh yeah. That's okay though. All right, let's keep going. Let's draw the shape of our panda's head next. We're gonna start over here and we're gonna draw an upside down U. So we're gonna start on the left side of the eye. We're gonna come up, over, and down on the right side. Yes. <laughs> Now let's draw the bottom of our panda's head. I'm gonna turn my paper a little sideways so that it's easier to draw. We're gonna draw the cheek over here. We're gonna come under and draw another cheek over on the right side. And it's also kind of flat underneath the chin. Yeah, just like that. Now let's draw the ears. I'm gonna draw a upside down U shape. It kind of looks like a circle or part of a circle on the left side and also that same shape over here on the right side. Nice. Now let's also draw the spot around each of the eyes. But first, let's draw another circle that goes really close to the eye that we've already drawn. That will leave a white border around the eye so it's easier to see the eye when we color in the spot. Okay, let's do that same circle over on the right side. Go around and connect. Now let's draw the spot. We're gonna draw another bigger oval that goes around each eye. So I'm gonna start here on the cheek. We're gonna come around like this and curve back into the cheek. <laughs> That's really cute. Okay, let's do the same spot on the other eye all the way around and connect to the cheek. Oh, it's so cute. It's really cute. We'll color those in later. Let's draw the body next. We're going to draw a U shape. We'll start here. I'm going to draw a U shape that comes down, over, and then back up. There you go. Now let's draw the arms. We're gonna start here and draw a U shape that comes down, around, and then we'll connect back to the outside of the U shape. Looks like a really tall, skinny U. And then we can do another shape just like that, but on the other side for the other arm. Let's also connect these two arms with kind of an upside down U shape that connects like that. We're gonna color in the shape, the arms and also in between the arms, black. Okay, now let's draw the legs sticking out to the side. I'm gonna draw a straight line coming out to the left and also straight out to the right. Then we're gonna curve up like this, around and then connect back into the body. <laughs> There you go. And then we could do the same thing on the right side. Curve up, around, and back into the body. Let's also draw the bottom of our panda's foot. I'm gonna draw an oval shape on the left and also the same size oval on the right. My right foot is a little bit bigger than my left foot. 
<laughs> That's okay, right? Yeah. We're practicing. Okay, it just looks like a panda. What are we missing? The unicorn horn. Yeah, we're <laughs> missing the horn sticking out. Let's draw a upside down V. I'm gonna curve up at the top so it's not a sharp it's V. A, it's a friendly a one. Friendly v. Yeah. It's not dangerous. <laughs> There you go, and then back down. Oh, that's really cute. We can also draw little diagonal lines that come across all the way up. We should make our pandacorns a little more mythical. What should we add? Wings. Definitely. Let's start over here and draw a curve that kind of follows the cheek. We're coming out to the left. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the right. We're gonna follow the cheek coming up to the right. There you go. And one, I like how big we're drawing the wings. Now let's draw the feathers coming back down. Now you have less room right here, so you could draw the feathers coming into the foot. I'm gonna draw yous that are connected together like this. And yeah, I'm gonna connect into the foot also. Oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's do the same thing on the right side. We're gonna draw another feather coming down and then connected U-shapes into the foot. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, it's really cute. I'm gonna add another row of feathers inside of the wing. If you want to, you could leave this off or add it. I'm gonna draw more feathers on this side too. Hello, we did it. We finished drawing our panda corn, except we still need to- Color it. Yes, my favorite part. And we can't forget to color the spots. Yeah. We are gonna fast forward, so remember to pause the video at the end to match our same color. You could also color your panda corns any way you want. You ready to fast forward? Yes. and drawing our panda corns and they turned out so cute. I especially love them all colored in. Yeah, me too. And we also added even more mythical magic, <laughs> like stars. <laughs> yeah, you could add even more mythical creatures. Oh yeah, in the background. You could also draw your little panda corn on a cloud floating in the sky. <laughs> We used our markers to color with, but you can use whatever you have at home, like colored pencils. Or even crayons. Yeah. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your panda corn. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Hey, our friends, you're gonna draw a strawberry. Yeah, a strawberry monster. When it's folded up, it'll be a strawberry, just a friendly one. And then when you open it, it'll be a scary monster. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you're gonna follow along. You need your drawing supplies. We're gonna use markers. You also need some. Paper and some of the colors. Yeah, you're ready to start. Yes. Let's put our markers off to the side and first we're gonna fold our paper. Let's start by taking the top edge, line it up with the bottom edge like this and crease it down the middle and out to the corners. Then we're gonna take the top flap and line it up with the top edge and crease it down. There you go. Next, we can flip over our paper and repeat that last step. So we're gonna take the top flap, line it up with the top edge, and crease it down. There you go, good job, Austin. Now we're gonna take that last fold and unfold it because it's just a guide fold. If it opens up like this, you can flip it around and then unfold it, flatten it out. There you go. And then we're gonna flip it back over and your paper should open like this. Does yours do that? Yeah. Nice. I have some red scratch paper that we'll put underneath our drawing paper just to protect our table. It doesn't need to be red and you don't have to use the scratch paper if you don't want to. We're using markers so it helps protect our table. Okay, let's first draw the shape of our strawberry. I'm gonna draw a big upside down U above the fold. So we're gonna start on the fold and we're gonna start over here. I'm gonna come up like this. Well, it's gonna be kind of a flat upside down U. See how there's kind of a flat right in the middle of the U shape. There you go, crossed and down. Oh, I like your shape, that's awesome. Okay, now let's draw the bottom of our strawberry. We're gonna start over here on the left and we're gonna start curving under like this. And then down here, we're not gonna have a point, a sharp point, we're gonna have kind of a rounded point. And then we're gonna come back up 
and connect on the right side. Nice job. Okay, let's now draw the stem up here on the top. We're gonna draw a curve coming out to the right and we can draw another curve that matches that one right next to it and then connect those at the top. Okay, now let's draw the little leaves sticking out of our strawberry. I'm gonna draw another curve coming out this way and then curve back in. Uh, now it kind of looks like an apple. Yeah. We need to add more leaves. <laughs> Here we go and connect. Then let's draw another one. I'm gonna draw it right next to it like this. We'll curve out and then back in. I'm gonna add a couple more on this side too. Add yeah, maybe two, oh, maybe one more little one over here. And you could add um, another one over here. <laughs> you could add as many little leaves as you want. You could even add less. There you go. That looks really cool, Austin. Now it looks more like a strawberry. Next, let's draw the funny face to our strawberry. I'm gonna add eyes. I'm gonna draw a big circle over here on the left and also a big circle over here on the right. The one on the right's a little bit bigger just to make it crazier. <laughs> you can change your eyes if you want. You could add different eyes. Maybe your eyes are angry or you could draw one eye closed and one eye open. Or I could just draw one eye. Or you could draw one <laughs> eye right in the middle. <laughs> I like it. Okay, now let's draw. I'm gonna draw another circle inside each eye like this. I'm gonna draw smaller circles too for the highlights. I'm going kind of fast because you really could change your drawing any way you want. You don't have to draw exactly like me. I'm gonna draw the little highlights inside each eye. Oh, and I'm gonna draw a little, maybe a little eyebrows too, and maybe another little eyebrow, or not eyebrow, but a little wrinkle under the eyes. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next, let's draw the mouth. I'm gonna draw a straight line that goes underneath the fold. You can go back over it and draw the straight line on top of the fold too. And I'm also leaving a little space on each side of the strawberry. So it doesn't connect all the way. Yeah, and I'm gonna add little cheek lines too. There we go. Oh, my strawberry doesn't look very friendly, but that's that's okay. You can, you can make your strawberry look any way you want. Now we're ready to open up our folding surprise. We should have half the strawberry up here at the top and half down here at the bottom. I drew the mouth below the fold and also above the fold so that you could see it on top and bottom. This next part's really fun. We're gonna add all of the scary stuff inside of this folding surprise. So we wanna make sure that when we're drawing and adding these extra details, that we're adding them below this top fold and above the bottom guide fold. That way when it's closed up, it's hidden. Now let's add the really scary teeth. I'm gonna start up here at the top. I'm gonna to draw a big curve that comes out to the right. Oh, these are gonna be really scary teeth. And then a big curve that comes out to the left and then also to the right. And then I'm gonna connect these in between by drawing a zigzag line. Oh, really scary. Some of the teeth are gonna be kind of small and some of them are gonna be really big. And then right at the end, I'm gonna connect into the side tooth. <laughs> Those are awesome. I wish I drew my teeth that big. It kinda looks like a beard. <laughs> it does. Now let's draw the bottom teeth. I'm gonna start here and draw the same curve coming out to the right, or the left, I mean, and then another curve coming out to the right. There you go. Oh, I love your teeth. It's super scary. <laughs> and then, yeah, just oh, like how yeah. you're doing it, I'm gonna connect by adding zigzags and curves that come all the way across to the other side and then connect in. Oh, you're adding even more teeth. I'm gonna add more teeth too will behind these other teeth. Oh, that's really scary. I like that. Now you guys could add other things. Maybe you could add uh, small strawberries inside. Maybe this monster strawberry is eating smaller strawberries. That's sad. But, <laughs> sad and scary. Well, <laughs> oh, I really like the extra teeth. The next thing I wanna add is a tongue. You could leave the tongue off if you don't have room. Your teeth are a lot closer or you could fit it in. 
I'm gonna draw an S curve that comes out like this and comes out over to the right. Oh yeah, it weaves in between the sharp teeth. And then I'm gonna start up here and draw a point at the end of the tongue and then curve around and back into the mouth. <laughs> yes! I'm gonna draw another little strawberry that's behind this tongue. You could leave this part off because you're really <laughs> running out of room. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna draw two eyes and it's behind the tongue. So we're gonna just draw it like this. And then maybe it has little fingers hanging onto the, he's hiding behind the tongue. I'm gonna draw the little leaves too, sticking out. There we go. <laughs> okay, now let's draw the side of our strawberry's mouth. I'm gonna start by drawing the mouth. We're gonna connect from here all the way down. So this is the inside of the mouth. So it's really from this point, we're gonna imagine it coming down there and then connecting, we're gonna imagine it connecting to there. So really it's just a line in between the teeth. There you go. And then the same thing over here on this side. So right about there, I'm gonna do the same. My, the side of my mouth is going behind the tongue too, just like yours. And then we're gonna connect to there. Okay, now let's draw the outside of the strawberry. I'm gonna connect the side of the strawberry coming down. Yours is gonna go all the way down to there. Imagine it going behind the teeth, coming down here, and then we're gonna connect, yeah, maybe right to the tooth right there, and then we'll draw a little line there too. There you go. And then connect it. Let's do the same thing on the right side. We're gonna connect to the tooth, and then we'll imagine it going behind the teeth, behind the tongue, coming out, connecting to the teeth, and then to the bottom of the strawberry. Yeah, and then right there. Let's add a few more details on the side. Let's draw an arm. I'm gonna draw it coming out to the side like this and up. And then we can draw the sharp fingers. I'm gonna draw a curve coming down. <laughs> Then we're gonna start at the end, draw the claw coming up like this. Oh, and then we could draw the inside of the hand. Then I'm gonna draw another claw right here. I'm gonna draw a little V shape inside the first claw. And then let's connect this back into the strawberry for the rest of the arm. Let's do another claw over here on the right side. I'm gonna have it coming out in the same spot, coming out and then bending up. Maybe it bends differently because the tongue is right there. And then I'm gonna draw that big upside down U for the claw coming down. Draw the claw coming back up. A little bump for the hand. And I'm gonna just connect the arm back into the strawberry. I'm gonna draw a V shape for the next claw. Oh, you added another one too. I'm gonna add a third claw and maybe another claw over on this side too, so it matches. We did it awesome, we finished drawing our strawberry monster. But we still need color it. Yes, my favorite part. We are gonna fast forward this part, so remember to pause the video and take time to color your strawberry monsters. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Awesome, we did it! We finished drawing and coloring our strawberry monsters. They turned out awesome. But let's show our art friends the inside. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> I love your strawberry monsters so much. I added a few extra things like little strawberries and you could add as many different things as you want to your drawing. You could also leave it just like this. My favorite part of your monster is the one eye. That's super funny. <laughs> Thank you. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your strawberry monster. We do. We hope you had a lot of fun, and we hope you take time to color your drawings and add extra things to the inside. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Roar, I'm going to eat your strawberry. <laughs>
Hey art friends, today we're drawing some really cool shoes. Jordan 1's. Yes. We hope you get to follow along. You need your drawing supplies. We're going to use a pencil and a marker. You also need some paper and something to color with. Yeah. You ready to start? Yes. Let's start with our pencil so that we can draw the basic shape of our shoe before we use our marker. Let's start by drawing the bottom or the sole. We're going to draw a horizontal line that comes across our paper and you could draw a little curve to it right at the front and it curves just has a natural curve. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Now we're going to draw the toe and we're going to start right here and we can kind of curve it a little bit, but the main part is that we're going to draw a diagonal line coming back in. This is the toe of our shoe. Then let's draw the back or the heel. We're going to draw a, another diagonal line and it's going to come up and kind of curve in. It's not really a diagonal line. Well, kind of. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Slightly, yeah. Then we're going to stop right about here and we're going to draw the top or the part where your foot comes in. We're going to draw another diagonal line coming forward to the left. And you could draw yours a little bit longer. There you go. I'm going to actually go back over my pencil lines just to make sure they're dark enough for our art friends to see on the camera. So I'm going to press a little harder, but you guys can press lightly so that it's easier to erase at the end. Okay, now we're going to draw. We're going to come down like this for the tongue or the front of our shoe. And then we're going to draw a curve that comes forward and into the toe. So I'm going to kind of do that again. There we go. And you could go back over. It's okay if your lines are a little messy because these are just guidelines. I'm going to make the toe a little thicker. So I'm going to extend this up a little more and then we're going to come across. I'm going to leave the first line there so I know where to make it thicker. There we go, like that. Nice. Let's use the eraser and erase that first line. On the front of the shoe, I'm going to draw it a little more curved on the toe. Now right here, let's also add the tongue. We're going to draw another curve or line that comes out of the top. And we're going to draw it a little higher than the side of the shoe. And then we're going to curve back in to the top. Nice. Now let's add a few more details. Let's draw the sole next. We're going to draw the thickness. We're going to draw it a little closer together at the front. And then as it goes towards the back, we're going to get it a little thicker towards the back or the heel. So back here, it's a little thicker than the front. Now let's add one more line on the sole. We're going to draw the bottom of the sole or the red part. We're going to draw this line coming back and it's going to get a little thicker or thinner, thinner actually. Yeah. It's thicker towards the front and then thinner in the back. Nice. Good job. Now let's draw a diagonal line right about here. We're going to draw it coming up to the top left. We're going to draw it right about there. Yeah. And then we're going to draw a curve that goes up, down. Then we're going to come back up and stop right there. Then from here, we're going to draw a curve that curves this way and then back the other way. Okay, now let's draw the front. We're going to draw a curve that starts here. We're going to come back like we're going to connect into this shape, but we're going to stop. And then we're going to draw this little U shape right here that comes down and then back up. Shoes are so cool to draw. Yeah. <laughs> now let's come up here to the top and we're going to draw a diagonal line that comes down. And look at this, it gets thicker towards the back also. Yeah. And then up here at the front, we're going to draw a curve that comes down from here and we're going to curve back. We're kind of matching this same line. So we're going to curve down to the right and I'm going to stop right about here. Now we're going to connect from this shape over to this shape and we're going to do it with a little curve, a wavy line. We're going to curve up and then down and then back up. So we got this little curve in the middle or a little bump in the middle. Nice. Now let's come down here 
and we're going to draw a diagonal line with a little curve up, down, and then back up. So it kind of repeats that same shape. I'm going to go over it a couple times just to make it darker. Now right here, let's draw another diagonal line that comes down, and then we're going to go back up. So it looks like the letter V, kind of like the letter V, <laughs> comes down and then back up. And then this line, we're going to connect into that line we just drew. Nice. This is where the Air Jordan logo is. We're going to leave that off to keep the lesson a little easier. Okay. What should we draw next? The swoosh. Yeah, let's do it. Let's start here, and we're going to kind of start close to this line right here. I'm turning my paper sideways. Makes it a little easier sometimes. We're going to draw a diagonal line matching. And then right here, we're going to draw the curve or the end of the swoosh coming up. So this part's the small or the inside of the swoosh, so it's smaller. Now we're going to draw the outside of the swoosh. We can start here, and we're going to come forward really far. So draw a bigger curve. And then we're going to come back and thinner towards the back of the shoe. Nike swoosh is pretty fun to draw. Yeah. I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger. There we go, like that. And that's OK if you need to pause the video and take extra time to get these lines just the way you want them. Now let's draw the detail on the heel. It starts here on the swoosh, comes down, and then we're going to curve into the sole. The one thing that I noticed on mine that I like on yours is the sole right here is curved up a little more. So I'm going to change mine to match yours. And then I'm going to erase. Mine was too straight. It didn't have that natural curve at the front where the toes just coming up. Now that we have all of the general shapes done, we can put our pencil off to the side and switch to our marker. Now let's start by drawing the shoelaces first. I'm going to draw the letter U, we're going to come down to the first part of our shoe. Right here, I'm going to draw the letter U. It's going to come in and then back up. Nice. Now we're going to draw two more letter U's, but we're going to overlap them. So here's the first one. We're going to draw it coming down this far, and it's kind of going to the right, or actually straight up. Then we're going to draw another U shape. comes down like this and back up. So they're kind of, they're crossing over each other. Okay, now let's draw the next one. We're gonna draw it right here, coming down, back up. Then the next one right next to it. We want these to be the same width. Okay, now let's draw one more. Then we're gonna fit in another one right here. I'm going to actually draw it to the end or the top of the pencil line. And then we're going to add one more, but it's sideways. So we're going to come right here, in, and then back out. Nice. Now on each of these U's, let's draw the top of the shoelace curving up and outside of the pencil line. Now if you need to, pause the video and take extra time. Now let's start here, and we're going to trace over the pencil line, coming up and stopping there, curving around, and then connect to the shoelace. Oh, before we go any further, let's switch to our eraser. And we're going to erase all of the pencil lines inside of the shoelaces. This will help us keep it from being too confusing. <laughs> Now we can switch back to our marker, and we're going to trace underneath the shoelace and over the pencil line, and then connect down to here. Then let's also draw a little hole for the shoelace up here at the top. And we can also draw the very top of our shoe on top of the pencil line, coming back, and then connect down. 
Now let's draw the tongue. We're going to draw a curve right here on top of the pencil. Then we're going to curve back and into the top. Let's add the little Nike tag up here. We're going to draw a line in and then we can draw a curve going up to the top. Next, let's draw the toe or the front of our shoe. We're going to trace on top of the pencil line, coming forward and then down to the sole. We're going to stop before we get to the sole. Then let's draw this top detail right here. We're going to draw a curve on top of the pencil line. Then let's draw the next shape. We can start here, trace up to the shoelace. Then in between the shoelaces. Then let's come all the way up here in between the shoelaces and then draw that curve that comes down back to the sole. Next, let's draw all the lines in between the shoelaces. Now let's also draw in between the shoelaces here. I'm adding a little extra curve in between the shoelaces to look like they're pulled tight. Nice. Now let's also draw this curve right below the shoelaces. We'll just trace on top of the pencil line. Then we can draw this curve and connect to the back of the shoe. Let's also finish the back of the shoe, the heel right here. We're going to trace on top of the pencil line, but stop when you get to the sole. Now let's draw on top of the pencil for the swoosh. And then also the outside of this swoosh. I like saying that word swoosh swoosh. <laughs> And then let's finish the heel right here, come down and connect to the sole. Now we're going to draw the top of the sole. Let's just trace over the pencil line first, the top one, all the way to the back. Now let's draw the outside of our sole. We're going to draw it coming out further than the pencil line. So right here, we're going to add a little curve and we're going to draw on the outside of the pencil. So it comes out further. And then we could do the same thing back here. We'll draw a little curve coming out and down. Now let's draw the bottom. I'm actually going to turn my paper sideways. So it's a little easier to pull this line towards me. I'm going to connect it all the way to the back like that. Nice. Let's add the other line. I'm going to turn my paper again so that I can trace over this pencil line a little easier. Pull it towards my body. I think it's a lot easier sometimes to do that. You actually traced over the same line. I, I didn't explain oh, it very oops. well. <laughs> it's okay. <My> <laughs> I actually traced again. I turned my paper again this way, but then I drew the line above. Yes. There the we bottom go. part is red. Yeah, there you go. And then let's add one more detail on our soul. I'm going to turn my paper this way this time. I'm going to draw it right below the top of the sole. So I'm going to try to get it exactly next to it. That's okay if it's not perfect, right? Yes. Most important thing is? To have fun. Yeah, and to practice. Practice. Oh, it looks so cool. Let's add a few more details. Right here, I'm going to add an extra line up at the top. And then let's also add Right here, we're going to draw lines that come straight down. We're going to leave a little space and we're going to go all the way to the back with vertical lines on the bottom of our sole. Okay. Let's also add the little venting holes up here on the toe. We're going to start here and just add little dots that come down. Then we're going to leave a little space and add another row of dots coming down. And then we can add, they're not going to be exactly 
like the shoes, but we can add a few more coming towards the front of the shoe. Jack, we did it. We finished drawing our Air Jordans. They look so cool, except we're not completely done. We still need to color it. Yes, my favorite part. Now you could color your Jordans any way you want, but I think we should color them the classic Jordans. Yes, the red, red and black. Yeah. Before we fast forward, let's switch to our eraser and erase any of the pencil lines we can still see. Now at the very end of our coloring phase, you can pause the video to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Jack, give me five. We did it. We finished coloring our Jordans. They look awesome. Yeah, they look so much better colored. I hope our, our friends are gonna color their drawings also. You can pause the video to match your same coloring or you could color them any way you want. Maybe a blue color. Oh yeah. What else could our art friends add to their drawing? The Jordan logo right here and stitching. Oh yeah, the logo is on the top or where your ankle would be and stitching is like through the whole shoe. Yeah. We left that off to keep the lesson a little easier. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing Jordans. We do, we hope you had a lot of fun and we'll see you later art friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. So you're gonna draw a teddy bear. Yeah, because today is National Teddy Bear Day. So to celebrate, we thought this would be a lot of fun. We hope you're gonna follow along. You need your markers or something to draw with. Mm -hmm. You also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yeah, you ready to start? Yes. Let's first draw our teddy bear's nose. We're gonna draw it in the middle of our paper, but towards the top so that we have room for the body. We're gonna draw an oval shape right here. And let's color in that shape also. And then we can also draw the mouth. Let's draw a little U shape that comes down to the left and also down to the right. And then we can also draw the snout. Let's draw a curve that's gonna go up and over the nose and back down. Looks like an upside down U. And then we can connect the bottom by drawing a little curve from the left side over to the right side. Now let's draw the eyes. I'm gonna draw a circle on the left, this size, and the same size circle on the right side to match. Now let's draw a small circle in the top left of each eye for the highlight, and then we can color in the big circle but leave that little circle white. Yeah, you have to add eyelashes. Always. Well, well if you want to. Mm. <laughs> that part we sped up. So remember to pause the video if you need extra time. Okay, now let's draw the shape of the head. I'm gonna start right here next to the left eye. I'm gonna come underneath the snout and then back up next to the red eye. And we're kind of close down here at the bottom, so there's a small chin. But then for the top, let's draw kind of a big forehead. So we're gonna draw a big upside down U-shape to connect the shape of the head. <laughs> so cute. Mm -hmm. I love yours so much. And I love that yours is wider. It doesn't look exactly the same, but they're both turning out awesome. And that's because the most important thing is- To have fun. And to- Practice. Practice, remember to practice. It's okay if your drawings look different than ours, I'm sure they're turning out really cool. All right, let's keep going. Now let's draw the ears. We're gonna draw a oval shape or a circle, kind of a half circle, right? Mm -hmm. Only part of the circle is showing because it's connected to the head. And then let's draw that same shape over here on the right side to match. And that's okay if they're a little different. But we're going to try to make them the same size. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I love yours. <laughs> okay, then we can draw the inside of the ears. I'm going to draw it smaller, that same shape, inside. Oh, it's really cute. Now we're ready to draw the body and the arms. Let's start here and we're gonna draw the arm coming down in front of our bear. So we're gonna start there, we'll draw a curve coming down and we'll start here and draw another curve coming down. And we're gonna curve around for the rest of the arm. We're gonna curve here, around, and then we're gonna come back up, almost like we're gonna connect, but then we'll stop. And then we're gonna repeat that same shape on the right side and try to make them look exactly the same. I think I might start up here though, to try to match and draw the opposite so that I can see it a little bit better. Good job, you did it. 
Then we can draw the bottom of our teddy bear, our belly, teddy bear's belly right there. <laughs> and then let's draw the feet sticking out to the side. So first let's draw a little line coming out on each side. And then we're gonna curve up for the foot, around, and then connect back into the arm. Here's the tricky part. We're gonna try to match that same shape and size over here on the right side. And that's okay if they're different, right? Mm -hmm. We're practicing and connect in. Yeah, mine, mine's a little big. <laughs> Let's draw the bottom of our teddy bear's foot. I'm gonna draw a little oval that touches on the outside, and then we'll do the same thing on the right side to match. And then let's also draw the belly. I'm gonna draw a little curve going this way over the top. Hadley, we did it! We finished drawing our teddy bears. They look really cute, except we're not completely done. We still need to color them. Yeah, they're gonna look even cuter. This part will fast forward, so remember to pause the video at the end if you want to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Mm -hmm. Give me five. We did it. We finished drawing and coloring our teddy bears. They're super cute. I especially love that you changed the color. <laughs> yeah, that's a cute polar bear. <laughs> I especially love the little bow and your eyelashes. Yes. It's really cute. Our, our friends can add whatever they want to their drawings. You can change it. You could change the color or even add more things. Maybe a birthday party hat or even a background. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing a teddy bear. We do. And we also want to wish you a happy National Teddy Bear Day. I'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.